Hello, my name is Carlo Piana. Together with my friend Alberto Pianon, we will be discussing on open source compliance integrated in development. Today, we will be dividing our presentation in two main areas. First, I will be giving you a brief introduction on the generalities of open source compliance. And secondly, we'll be uh, presenting on what we have done in Oniro and so that you can learn from uh, our experience and build upon the tools we have uh, produced. So, uh, compliance. Why you do compliance? There are many reasons why you want to do compliance. The first and most evident is because there, it's a legal requirement. Copyright violation has consequences, but you also could want to have a more social uh, uh, approach, uh, be a good citizen in the community that hosts you uh, or the general uh, open source community. So you want to respect the, the copyright of others and respect the um, licensing condition they have chosen. But the third and most important uh, aspect in a business environment is the ecosystem. Uh, you want your software to pass the threshold of hobbies to be a professional, then you must take care of uh, those who are going to implement it downstream. So you want to be uh, writing good software, secure, well-documented, and creating the least legal friction as possible. Uh, today, doing the, the, the very first uh, uh, level is not enough. You must uh, point higher, your target must be higher. And so uh, all, all having uh, just the, the general compliance is not enough. But what is the, 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 first, the first level? First, make sure you are compliant. How you can do that? You must know what's inside your code and um, what we call a software bill of materials. So the elements that compose your software, uh, your software project, and most importantly, what you are reusing that brings the legal conditions. So uh, the legal condition uh, must match uh, the inbound must match the outbound. Uh, you must comply with all conditions and the condition must be consistent and, and compatible with the license you have chosen. Most Some licenses, especially the copyleft licenses, require you to only use certain outbound licenses. And these must be made a process. You cannot do it impromptu whenever you want because the, the moment will never come. You must program when you do it. And especially you must uh, do it uh, or consider it from the beginning and throughout the old development process. Otherwise you will not do it. There are um, higher level of compliance. So not just you are compliant, but you make the world know that you are. And uh, I just point out to a few uh, standards that we are using for, for this. And the first two are ISO standards, so official standards. The first is SPDX. SPDX is a, a package uh, interchain format. It provides a machine readable way to know what's inside the package and what the licensing conditions are mainly. Uh, other things are also uh, provided. Uh, and the second is open chain. Open chain is a more holistic approach to compliance. Uh, it not just uh, provides um, artifacts like uh, software bill of materials or the documents like the licenses and, and point of contents and so on and so forth, but it, it approaches the internals of the, uh, of the project, uh, uh, making sure that everything is good and well staffed, uh, everybody is on the same page, it's informed and documented, there is a, a point of contact for uh, compliance issues, so for reporting and so on and so forth. And the third, uh, I just touched upon very briefly, but it's also very important, is reuse. Reuse is especially for the first party software, is a way to announce uh, in a machine readable way uh, under which license any single file of your own distribution, the software you have made, 
is so that uh, uh, people downstream doesn't uh, don't have to bother about scanning because the information is already provided in the good way in the first place uh, in the first script. Okay. Um, the, the when is also important. Uh, you can have two approaches. The first we call it post mortem, but as as the wording uh, suggests, it's uh, you are just dissecting the cadaver, a, a corpse. You cannot um, do it uh, efficiently. You will end up to, to be too late. Too late. Uh, the, the, the 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 analysis will just delay the. Uh, the, the outcome of, of your project and the distribution, so you will never do it. Uh, the, the, the approach we are advocating is continuous. Uh, you should think uh, of uh, CICD and complement and append this, the next concept like continuous compliance, like CC, so CICD, CC. That's, that's a good way. So. Uh, enough for the generalities. Let me uh, show you very briefly, then I will hand over to Alberto on uh, how these uh, pans into uh, Oniro. Oniro uh, is a very challenging project, just for the, the very nature is an, a, a multi-kernel OS targeting um, mobile devices, uh, IoT devices. Uh, for this reason, we are using Yocto and Bitbake. So why I'm bothering telling you the, uh, the technicalities, there are other uh, very good presentation in other tracks on that, but for the legal point of view, we face the problem that there is no software packet manager. So we have no way to anticipate what package goes in and there is no app getting any, any source packages at all. So um, we need to do that uh, in another way. And the sheer amount of uh, files and software that is required and that we have to, to keep uh, 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 online for many years is daunting. And it's a not human, uh, not human being or set of human beings can, can do that. It needs to be automated. Uh, not just we have many thousand files in the distribution, but we have different platforms that we target, each with, with a, a different set of uh, source code. That adds complexity and the array of the combination is uh, is, is very complex. So uh, uh, this is the cast of character that has done the tool set, the tool chain that we have prepared. Uh, of course, there is array, but also let me mention uh, Noi Tech Park, which has done um, the heavy lifting of the software making as well. Uh, this is very briefly the how, uh, uh, then Alberto will give uh, you a more in-depth explanation. We have decided for an open source software, for an open source operating system to only use uh, open source tools. So we use uh, for scanning, we use ScanCone and Fossology. Uh, the, it, it has two, three different uh, uh, scanners. Uh, and we use GitLab uh, pipelines. So uh, this is why uh, this is how we integrate uh, uh, the tool chain, the, the software compliance tool chain, into the uh, the build environment uh, because it's 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 on GitLab. Uh, as, as I mentioned, a, a, a tool chain because we have not just devised a process, but we have written uh, tools. Uh, we call the tool chain NS for friends. It, it comprises of many, uh, of many different uh, bits, and we, we come to that in, in, a, in a moment. And one step ahead, uh, we are using open standards. I've already mentioned uh, reuse, SPDX, and open chain. They are all open standards. And last but not least, we're, we, we're, we are doing it the real uh, open source way. Uh, we are not reinventing the wheel. We use existing existing compliance work. So uh, work decisions uh, that are been uh, made have been made by people we trust, and the we found that uh, the the most reliable source for this information is uh, Debian. So Debian is the um, uh, is the source for uh, for many of our the information we use, and this allows us to cut the times uh, considerably. 
It's, uh, it's a small step. We have just uh, begun. The, the, the journey is a long journey. And uh, we, with the help of the community, we invite everybody to uh, look into the project. Everything is, is in the open. We accept and we invite uh, feedback. Uh, we invite criticism. Uh, we invite suggestions, anything you can do. Uh, you're most uh, than welcome. Now, enough talking of me. I will hand over to Alberto. Alberto, the floor is yours. Thank you, Carlo. As you just mentioned, for the Onero project's compliance work, we decided to use an open source approach. And uh, as Carlo mentioned, not only for software tools that we use and develop, but also for the compliance work itself by reusing compliance work already done by an existing community, the, the Debian community, of course. Basically, we knew we'd have had uh, to face a huge work, as Carlo said, and we tried to figure out a way to handle this work in a sustainable way over time. So, uh, as Carlo explained, uh, the target uh, uh, was an entire operating system distribution, meaning uh, hundreds of packages, which in turn means hundreds of thousand source files to review and hundreds of different licenses. So part of the work can be automated by copyright and license scanners. Uh, the, Best uh, is, uh, could be a scan code, for example, which is an, an excellent open source tool. But all scanners regularly produce a significant number of false positives and false negatives. Why? The problem is that licensed scanners uh, need to find and parse all possible legal notices found within the source code. But such legal notices are usually not intended to be machine readable. They follow many different standard styles or no standard at all in some cases. And their meaning may be heavily context dependent. And uh, the problem is that any machine that tries to understand human texts inevitably gets something wrong and uh, licensed scanners are no exception in, in this. So luckily we have another excellent open source tool, which is Phosology, that helps us uh, review in the findings of licensed scanners to validate or correct them. But even through the help of Phosology, we realize that still uh, this, this still would have required hundreds and hundreds of man hours at every project re release, at least for, for a project of the size of uh, Onero. Moreover, uh, Onero is an operating system and every operating system is expected to, to, to grow over time, maintaining the, uh, in, in this way, maintaining the compliance part would have required a continuous significant workload. And uh, that's why at the very beginning, we asked ourselves, could we find another way to keep this automated scanners plus human review approach while keeping the workload low? And we thought, let's do that the open source way. One of the good things about open source is that you can reuse others' work, uh, thus avoiding reinventing the wheel if someone else already invented it. Was there someone else's work we could reuse, someone else we could trust? Uh, so let's use a metaphor. Imagine you need to organize a party with a lot of people you don't know. And uh, I know you, you're afraid that uh, some of them may bring trouble and ruin your party. You should carefully check each of them before letting them in, which is a lot of work. Or you can ask a friend you trust that may already know some of them. If your friend vouches for the guests, you can skip most of the entry checks and enjoy your party. So do we have a friend that can vouch for the alien software components that we are willing to invite to our party, meaning to, to our own Euro project? Uh, we immediately thought about Debian. Uh, Debian community has a rigorous policy for including packages in their distribution. A policy, the most important thing, uh, that involves uh, uh, also collection and human validation of licenses and copyrights for each software package. Moreover, in Debian, such collected and validated information is generally available in machine-readable format. According to the Debian specifications, um, the license and the copyright of every single source file must be identified and stored in a specific format, the Debian copyright file of each software package. So uh, we decided to uh, de develop and implement some tools in order to identify possibly matching uh, Debian packages, assess their similarity with the alien packages we need to include in our project, 
and reuse the Debian and copyright metadata in order to skip human review on those packages. And um, the, the, the machine readable format uh, is uh, this, the Debian standard, uh, DEP5. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said before, the, the DEP5 uh, format provides mandates that every single uh, file uh, must have a copyright and license. Uh, this is different from, from other distributions and from other uh, package managers. And uh, uh, as I said before, this is important to stress, uh, the Debian copyright file is machine readable. So you can just collect the data and process them as you like. Of course, uh, uh, we knew that this could not solve everything. Uh, as expected, by using it in practice, we found that not always the matching package in Debian is a full match and that not all packages have a correspondence in Debian. Uh, moreover, uh, moreover, we also found that notwithstanding Debian specifications, not all Debian copyright files are actually machine readable. Uh, some of them are, are not uh, and uh, when some maintainers are, are to blame, but of course in, in, in every big project uh, that, that there are always some details that may uh, any, uh, see, do, do not follow the, the standards. But however, uh, from our first experience with the scanning of the alpha releases of our project, uh, we assessed that we can save more than 50% of the human review work that would be normally required, uh, which means hundreds of man hours saved. And what is more important, a more su maintainable, sustainable, uh, compliance activity in the long run. And uh, now enough for my part, from my part and uh, hand over back to you, Carlo. So then of course, after we will have uh, some live uh, question time possibly. And if you want uh, to have more details, uh, you can uh, contact us uh, separately. So um, to conclude uh, what we are giving back to the community, uh, in order to be uh, really open source. Uh, we will, of course, uh, release uh, NS for Friends. Uh, the entire tool chain is an open source, but that's not enough. Uh, the entire compliance documents, procedures, uh, and artifacts, uh, and all which is required for being uh, open chain conformance will be made public. Uh, we have a full dashboard that helps uh, developers to follow the state of, uh, of compliance and all the packages that and the files that have been uh, by um, the, uh, the the compliance team, and everything is going to be uh, under Apache license. Uh, of course, when we uh, are uh, permitted by by the upstream uh, constraints, and this is something that is I think unprecedented. We will be including, um, uh, we will be. Uh, make public the entire software bill of material under very liberal uh, CC0 um, conditions. And uh, not just that, we will also go as far as uh, releasing an, an entire uh, database of decisions, uh, the decision made uh, and recorded by Fasology, of course. And uh, these uh, should be uh, put upstream to clear define, which is a tool that Eclipse Foundation uses intensely, but it unfortunately could, could not use for uh, the different uh, uh, coverage. And uh, if everything, if it's possible, and of course, if it's accepted by the upstream, we will be uh, fix, uh, provide, or, or and or fix the reuse information so that other upstream projects will be uh, using reuse and so um, uh, announcing their licensing conditions uh, more uh, clearly and machine in a machine readable way. So a long talk. Uh, we will uh, welcome uh, any any question that you can have. Meanwhile, thank you for your attention and. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I stopped pretending my eyesight is good, so I'm wearing my glass back so I can read the questions. 
So we have a few questions. The first is if we are in touch with Double Open Project, uh, we know of them. Uh, we haven't had the chance to get in touch and exchange things with them. But uh, of course, there is scope for, for any kind of cooperation with any project. So we invite any project, and we will look forward to reach, up on, uh, reach out to uh, projects that are doing the same uh, or similar activities that we are doing. Uh, we have mentioned clearly defined during the presentation. That is the most evident because it's, uh, it's something that which is very highly considered in Eclipse Foundation. But this is just one example. Uh, so we have another question on uh, community adaptation of reuse and Dev5 due to their overhead is a deterrent. Uh, how do you want to push for reuse Dev5 without the broader support? Yeah, we know. We, we also inside we had some uh, pushback on adopting uh, reuse and Dev5 because for um, uh, the way that um, reuse. Um, uh, wants the, the licensing information to be displayed, uh, especially for small files, uh, is a lot of overhead in the, the source. Uh, we think that the overhead is comparatively minimal. There is a, a possibility to to, um, to make a blanket um, in depth five uh, way, a blanket uh, definition of uh, the license licensing of each and if I, but yes, uh, having each and any file defined with with the header is an overhead, and we are conscious of the problem. But uh, uh, the friction that you avoid downstream is also important, and for us, uh, uh, so far it's been it's been um, uh, the decision is made, and we are not getting back for our own software, and we'll try to convince upstream projects to adopt. Reuse as well because that's cre that it simplifies the life of uh, of uh, scanners downstream. Alberto, you want to chime in? Yes, just just a quick note. Uh, uh, we we discussed that with developers uh, um, because uh, sometimes it's it's uh, it's very difficult to to collect all license and metadata, uh, especially when you put together things in Yocto layers where you bring together many things also from third party sources. But we just decided. Uh, to start the reuse compliance process, let the reuse pipeline fail at times because we didn't complete the, the work, but th this is a work in progress. This will always be uh, a work in progress. So, uh, of course, uh, for, for every release, uh, we, we commit to, to, every, uh, to have everything that is first party distributed uh, uh, to be reuse compliant, but we accept that in, during the process there may be uh, yes, the times where we are not fully reuse compliant. This is not a problem because we, we see everything in this uh, IP compliance uh, process as a right process. So, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> there are many other questions. I will start from the bottom. Is Alien for Friends meant to be a replacement for tools cool. like Black Duck? Or is this only for OS, OS dependencies slash packages? Uh, it's not meant to be a replacement for Black Duck. Black Duck as a similar but different scope. Uh, this is uh, meant to relieve uh, the burden of uh, reviewers to redo, uh, re rehash things and reinvent the wheel, the wheel over and over. So an info friend is mainly meant to uh, reuse or readopt uh, decisions that have been already made, made by projects we uh, we consider re reliable. So instead of uh, spending months slash m m m uh, months, months in redoing the same work, we just uh, relay, uh, rely on, on them for uh, for uh, speeding up the uh, the recognition of the packages and uh, the decision they have made if we find, of course, a um, a, a, a good match. Uh, Black Dot does uh, many other things, and uh, uh, NS for Friends is not meant for dependencies as well. That is another part of, of the story. Uh, how does, does your work relate to the Eclipse Dash license check tool? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, we need to, to study how to uh, um, better implement it. You must consider that. 
Uh, Oniro has, has started as an independent uh, project not many months ago. And just recently, we have uh, joined forces and we are migrating our tools to Eclipse Foundations. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a refactoring work that we have mean to do. And um, many things that Eclipse does uh, are not suitable for what we're doing. Uh, others are uh, very, very strict, and 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 we we are struggling to to cope with that, those requirements. But uh, with enough time and effort, we will reach uh, a good level of integration. Um, um, there is another question. I did not really understand what you have actually created. Is it Ellen's for friends? Yes, Alien for Rent is what we have created. is a is software that uh, finds a matching. Uh, so far, only with Debian. Uh, the idea is to use other source, other uh, source of information and decisions. But yes, it does uh, check the software we are uh, using in uh, Bitbake, which is not a package manager. So we have few, fewer information than. Uh, other in, in other environments, and we find if we struggle, try and find a good match with Debian and decide whether we can reuse or not uh, their decisions. And for the software which has not a, a, a good match, we are using a, uh, a human resources, but more dedicated to the uh, the odd cases rather than the the ninth or tenth time the same license in the same package over and over so there is a lot of uh, of hard work and programming behind that Alberto, we want to add something yeah yeah uh, on the part uh, how does it relate to ci cd cc okay Alice for friends uh, is um, can be a standalone tool uh, actually is a set of commands uh, that uh, inputs uh, and uh, get input in JSON format or in SPDX format and outputs uh, other JSON or, or SPDX files. So it's a, it's, a, it's a chain that can be used as a standalone tool or, mm -hmm. or maybe just, just some comments or all of them. And uh, can be also integrated in a, in a CI pipeline. And this is what we are currently doing. Uh, so uh, yes, we, we do everything from building uh, all the, 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 the whole set of uh, uh, images that are in our build matrix that's very complex. Uh, we parse all the metadata, we aggregate them, we try to find a good match uh, uh, with the Debian, the snapshot Debian APIs. Uh, we do a uh, uh, scan uh, uh, scanning, uh, we compare the results in order to, to understand the difference uh, uh, between uh, our code, the code that we find in Yocto, and the code that we find in Debian. We assess the similarity, we apply the results, we import them to Fossology, we collect uh, the, the, Fossology, the results uh, on Fossology, and uh, we fix the SPDX file, and then we have uh, um, um, the SPDX bomb, SBOM, and uh, uh, another thing that we didn't mention, maybe uh, uh, a dashboard that collects uh, statistics on the progress uh, of the uh, compliance process. This Final question, uh, what is the best way to document our project to make it easy for you on Euro? Read the license information, where well, first you use SPDX, that is already something, and second, uh, which is the superset, use uh, reuse. Reuse uh, will allow us to have a, a, a definitive, um, uh, uh, authoritative, and machine-readable way to uh, have a final assessment of, of your software licenses file by file, not just package by package. So that's that's the, the, the best way, if at all possible. That's uh, I think this is uh, the final um, part of our time. We have no time. If you want to, to get more information, please reach out. There are there are uh, we, our addresses are public, and uh, we are available to answer. And there will be more occasions to share time with you. Thank you very much, and uh, to next time. Bye. Bye.